Hello everyone, I am Narendra. In this video, I will discuss about some basics of crystal structure and crystal defects in solids. Since nano typically concerns with itself with crystalline metal nanoparticles and semiconductor nanocrystals, having a basic picture of how the elements arrange themselves in this nanocrystalline system is important. In this respect, crystal structure comes into play in many aspects of research to understand the properties of the nanomaterials. Solids generally appear in three forms, amorphous, crystalline and polycrystalline. Each type is characterized by the size of an ordered region within the material. In amorphous, the atoms are arranged in irregular fashion. That is, no long range order in the material. These materials have orders only within few atomic dimensions. Glass like materials generally amorphous in nature. In crystalline, the atoms are in regular array. That is, these materials have a high degree of order throughout the entire volume of the material. Silicon, germanium, and some other materials are in single crystalline form. In case of polycrystalline materials, these materials have multiple crystal domains. These crystal domains vary in size and orientation with respect to one another. In all these cases, the properties of these materials exhibit differently. Now we discuss about crystal structure. If you take an ice cube, it looks like a simple cubic structure. In a cubic structure, the atoms are located at each corner of the structure. Atoms in a crystal are generally pictured as being arranged on an imaginary lattice. Individual atoms are hung off of the lattice. These individual atoms are referred as bases of the lattice. The endless repetition of this basis atom on a lattice makes up crystal. It is a small volume of the crystal that can be used to reproduce the entire crystal. This is completely a simple cubic crystal. If suppose the structure has an additional atom at the center of the cube that is called the base centered cubic structure or if an additional atom at the each face of the cubic it is called the face centered cubic structure so depending on the lattice arrangement and angle between the lattice planes the structures are classified into 14 three dimensional previous lattices these are also referred to as conventional unit cells most of these unit cells are not the simplest repeating units of an extended lattice one can find even simpler repeating units by looking harder. Rather, these conventional cells happen to be easy to visualize and interpret. So, these are the ones most commonly used. You can see in the animated image that how atoms are arranged in outside hexagonal structure. So, this will give you some basic understanding of the crystal structure. The crystal structure we have discussed so far represent an idealized and simplified system that can be used to understand the properties of solids. In contrast, real crystal contain large number of defects. It is impossible to obtain any solid material with 100% pure form. Some impurities are always present. Even if solids were 100% pure, Forming a perfect crystal would require cooling the liquid phase infinitely slow to allow atoms to find their proper positions. But it is crucial to maintain such conditions. Applying an external stress to a crystal can also cause imperfection in the structure. In this section, I discuss type of defects formed in the crystal. Solid crystal can have various types of defects. A point defect is any defect that involves only a single lattice point. This is a perfect crystal where the atoms are arranged in a regular array. 
with periodicity if any atom missing from this regular array then that is lattice site is vacant and it creates a vacancy defect if an atom occupies at the inter atomic spaces in the array lattice then the defect is called interstitial defect if any foreign atom replace the host atom then it is called impurity defect this foreign atom can also occupy at the inter atomic spaces and act as a interstitial defect so these are the all stoichiometric defects in the crystal another form of defects in solid crystals are dislocations these dislocations are generally line defects and edge dislocation it is a defect where an extra off plane of atoms is introduced through the crystal and distorting nearby planes of atoms edge dislocation move in response to shear stress applied perpendicular to the dislocation line a screw dislocation is a topological defect of a crystal lattice if one moves around the dislocation the lattice plane shifts by one layer like a spiral staircase a screw dislocation can be visualized by cutting a crystal along a plane and slipping one off across the other by a lattice vector the offs fitting back together without leaving a defect a screw dislocation mainly results from shear dislocation many dislocations in crystal materials have both edge and screw components dislocations are visible in electron microscopy you can see clearly how dislocations are visible in the image and also how a screw dislocation forms in a crystal can be clearly understood from this animated image i hope you understand some basics of crystal structure and defects and next time we will see with other discussion